Good morning, good afternoon, good evening from wherever you joined this webinar. Welcome at the 2021 edition of CON6, the FIPS annual convention. Welcome at the second webinar about scoring. And my name is Dennis Down. Also in this second webinar, I'm going to tell you about scoring differences between baseball and softball. I did an introduction about myself in the first webinar, but if you missed that webinar, let me quickly introduce myself. As mentioned, my name is Dennis Dunn and I'm living in the Netherlands. My career as an official started a long time ago. I started at a very young age as an umpire. From 1987 until 2002, I was a baseball umpire. I had the opportunity to officiate in the highest level from 1998 until 2002 in the Dutch majors. Unfortunately, I had to stop umpiring due to a knee injury. But I still wanted to be involved in baseball and softball. So in 2006, I achieved to get my license to score in the highest le level in the Netherlands and eventually score international. In my career, I participated in many international tournaments in different roles and hopefully this year scoring at the Olympics in Tokyo. So fingers crossed. Today's agenda will consist out of five topics. Today, I would like to cover the following topics. Better out of turn, designated hitter in baseball and designated player in softball, re-entry in softball, replacement player in softball, better known as the blood rule, and the last topic of this webinar, temporary runner in softball. This webinar consists a lot of text in the slides. As we have some difficult rules in the presentation, I thought it was good to have the rules as well visible in the presentation deck. Some other notes, the WBSC Scoring Commission is currently revising the scoring manual. The work will, will be finalized soon, but in this webinar, I'm already explaining some new symbols. However, in some cases, that won't be applicable in your competition for this season, but for next season. Let's get started with the first topic, better out of turn. Betting out of turn doesn't happen a lot in baseball and softball games, but it can be a complex rule. Better out of turn is in both sports an appeal situation. The official scorer shall not call the attention of any umpire or any member of either team to the fact that a player is betting out of turn. What is a better out of turn? When a better fails to step up to the plate and another better in the betting order completes his turn at bat, this batter is betting out of turn and the opposing team is entitled to appeal. If the opposing team fails to appeal, the improper batter becomes a proper batter and the results of his time at bat become legal. If the error is discovered, while the improper batter is at bat, the proper batter may take his place in the batter box at any time before the improper batter becomes a runner or is put out. Any balls and strikes count of the improper batter shall be counted in the proper batter times at bat. Any runs scored or bases run, stolen base, wild pitch, fast ball, bulk or illegal pitch, while the improper batter is at bat shall be legal. After the improper batter has completed his turn at bat, the opposing team appeals before the first pitch to the next batter. The proper batter is declared out, and the next batter is the batter whose name follows that of the proper batter, who has been called out. Any advance or score made as a result of the improper batter's turn at bat will be nullified. We shall now look at various situations of the batter out of turn and their consequences. Scenario number one, improper batter who becomes runner. If an improper batter becomes a runner and after an appeal by the opposing team, the proper batter is called out. The proper batter is credited with the turn at bat and the put out is credited to the catcher. And all other actions that occurred after the improper batter advised to first base are ignored. 
The second scenario is different between baseball and softball. Let me first start with the baseball definition. Improper batter who is put out. If the improper batter is put out and as a result of the appeal play by the opposing team, the proper batter is declared out. The proper batter is credited with the turn at bat and the put out and any assists are credited to the fielders who made the put out during the action that was nullified by the appeal. The softball definition of this scenario is as follows. If the incorrect batter has completed their turn at bat and the player who should have batted is out, any out that is made prior to discovering this infraction remains out. This means there are two out. This will not be judged as a double play. Third scenario is an improper batter who has not been put out or has been not yet batted. If an improper batter is in the batter's box and before he completes his turn at bat, the offensive team realizes the error or the defense appeals. The proper batter shall take his place and inherits the balls and strike count already accumulated by the improper batter. The last scenario, the improper batter becomes a runner or who is put out and an appeal made after the first pitch to the next batter. If an improper batter becomes a runner or is put out and the defense does not make its appeal until after the first pitch has been made to the next batter, the appeal is rejected. Improper batter becomes the proper batter and the results of his turn at bat becomes legal. Before I will show you some examples, it's good to have an understanding who will be the next batter after a better out of turn situation. As I already explained, the second scenario differs between baseball and softball and therefore as well who will be the next batter. For baseball, there are two criteria to determine the next batter. Softball, there are three criteria. Let me start with baseball. Number one, when the proper batter has been put out because he failed to bat in his proper turn, the next batter is the batter immediately after him in the batting order. Number two, when an improper batter becomes the proper batter as a result of a no appeal play having been made, or an appeal play being made late, next batter is the batter whose name follows that of the formerly improper batter, who is now the proper batter. It can be seen therefore that when the actions of the improper batter are legalized, the batting order resumes augmenting not only the batter who failed to bat in his proper turn, but also all the other batters who appear in the lineup between him and a now proper batter. For softball, we have three criteria to determine the next batter. Number one, the next batter is the player who names follows that of the player called out for failing to bat. If the next player was the incorrect batter who was called out, go to the next person in the lineup. Number two, if the player who was the improper batter was called out, their turn at bat will not take place in the same inning until all other batters in the batting order have completed their turn at bat. If their turn at bat occurs before this occurs, go to the next batter. Number three, if the batter declared out under these circumstances is the third out, the correct batter in the next inning will be the player who would have come to bat the player been put out by an ordinary play. A lot of talking, but let me show you some examples to explain the different scenarios. In this example, you see already the new scoring symbol for better out of turn. The symbol will replace the current OVR symbol. However, the new symbol will only be used after the new WBC scoring manual is published. 
For now, we remain to use the scoring symbol OBR with the 5 in the top right corner. The first scenario is the same for baseball as in softball. Improper batter who becomes a runner. The situation. Batter number 1 is officially at bat. But batter number 3 is going to hit and will reach first base. The appeal is made correct by the defensive team. Better number one is the proper batter, but better number three goes to bat with a base on balls as a result. The defense appeals before the first pitch to the next batter, and the umpire declares better number one out. Better number two will be the next batter. Score a turn at bat for better number one, and credit the put out for the catcher. As the defense appealed after the first pitch was made to the next batter, umpire rejects the appeal. Better number three becomes the proper batter once the first pitch was made to him. Score a LT lost turn to better number one, better number two with the no turn at bat or plate appearance and credit better number three with the base on balls. The second scenario is when an improper batter who is put out. Let me start with explaining the baseball situation first. Better number one is the proper batter, but better number three goes at bat and hits a fly out caught by the center fielder. The defense appeals before the first pitch and the umpire calls better number one out. The play on better number three is nullified by the appeal. The next batter is better number two. For softball, the ruling is different. As a reminder, if the incorrect batter has completed their turn at bat and the player who should have batted is out, any out that is made prior to discovering this infraction remains out. Fly out by the center fielder. For the batters who missed their turn, we score all LT. So the play on better number three remains. Fly out by the center fielder. Then we score an LT for all the player who missed that turn at bat until we reach the better who is called out due to the better out of turn. The next better is better number two and we have two outs. This is not a double play. Next, another softball example. Better runner number one on base, base on balls. Better number two should hit. The improper better number three is called out via a ground out six to three. The defense appeals before the first pitch and the umpire called better number two out. The play of better number three remains, so two out. The next better should be better number three. However, in one of the criteria of softball, of the next batter, the ruling is if the player who was the improper batter was called out, their turn at bat will not take place in the same inning until all other batters in the batting order have completed their turn at bat. If their turn at bat occurs, before this occurs, go to the next batter. So in this case, based on the criteria, the next batter is batter number four. For the rest of the players, we will write LT. But what about if we have three outs? Who will be the lead of batter in the next inning? We start a new inning, so that means the batting order starts over again. So the first batter of this new inning will be batter number three. Let's hope we don't have a lot of batter out of turns in a game. When it happens, Please remind the differences between baseball and softball and the effect of the different situations which it can occur. Let's move to the next topic. What are the differences between the designated hitter in baseball and the designated player in softball? One of the interesting rules in softball is the designated player combined with the flex player. In the slide, you see two columns with the differences between the designated hitter in baseball and the designated player in softball. I take the assumption that you have an understanding 
of the rules between the DP and the DH. So in baseball, we have the designated hitter, DH. And we have in softball, the designated player, DP. This is the most easiest difference. For baseball, the DH hits for the pitcher. The pitcher can only be found in the pitcher section of the score sheet. For softball, the DP can hit for any fielder. This fielder is recorded in the lineup below the ninth spot, the flex. In baseball, a single substitution with the DH. The pitcher will take the lineup spot of the DH. For softball, the flex player can only hit for the starting DP in the lineup. The lineup is going from 10 to 9 players. Baseball, a multiple substitution where the pitcher and DH are involved. The pitcher can be ending up in a different betting order spot than the DH spot. For softball, the flex player can only hit for the starting DP in the lineup. The lineup is going from 10 to 9 players. In baseball, if the DH is going to play in the field, the pitcher must be in the batting order. For softball, if the DP is going to take the field, the flex player doesn't play anymore. When this is a different position than the flex hat, the other player will be the OP, offensive player only. So let me try to explain the differences in a few examples, starting with baseball. So designated hitter for baseball. Example number one, pinch hitter replaces the DH at bat. Be aware that when a DH is substituted by a new player, this new player takes the position of pinch hitter, PH. In case the team enters the field without any fielding changes, this PH will automatically record it DH. For example number two, the pinch runner replaces the DH on base. Be aware that when a DH is substituted by a new runner, this new runner takes the positions of PR, pinch runner. In case the team enters the field without any fielding changes, this pinch runner will automatically record it as the DH. The pitcher replaces the DH in offense. In the event that the pitcher replaces the designated hitter or any other fielder when in offense, the replacement must be noted with vertical line to indicate that the pitcher came to bat in that inning. The example, a vertical line is drawn to indicate that pitcher Larry began to bat in the third inning for Martinez, who was the designated hitter. The change is not noted on the other sheet as the fielding positions have not changed. In this case, the offensive stats for the pitcher will be written in the correspondent line above, but his own defensive stats will be written in his correspondent defensive boxes in the lower part of the score sheet, beside his pitcher credits. The last example, the DH goes into defense. In the event that the designated hitter may be used on defense, use the right position column to indicate the fielding position. The pitcher must then bat in the place of the substituted defensive player unless more than one substitution is made. Then the manager must designate their spots in the batting order. There is no need to draw a vertical line since the player has not changed, only his position. However, the change in the defensive position should be indicated by a horizontal line in the opposing team's score sheet. And now for some softball examples. Example number one. The pinch hitter replaces the designated player at bat. Be aware that when a DP is substituted by a new player, this new player takes the position of pinch hitter. In case the team enters the field without any fielding changes, this PH will be recorded the DP. Example number two. Pinch runner replaces the DP on base. 
Be aware that when a DP is substituted by a new runner, this runner takes the position of PR pinch runner. In case the team enters the field without any fielding changes, this PR will automatically record it to the DP. Example number three. The flex replaces the designated player in offense. In the event that the flex player replaces the designated player or any other fielder when attacking, the replacement must be dotted with a vertical line to indicate that the flex player came to bat in that inning. In the example, a vertical line is drawn to indicate that first baseman Moore began to bat in the third inning for Heller, who was the designated player. The change is not noted on the other sheet as the fielding positions have not changed. In this case, the offensive stats for the flex player will be written in the correspondent line above, but his own defensive stats will be written in the correspondent defensive boxes in the lower part of the score sheet, where his name was in the 10th position of the score sheet. The last example, the designated player goes in defense. We see here a new player type, the offensive player only. But what is an offensive player only? Offensive player only, OPO, is a player in the betting order, other than the flex for whom the designated player is playing defense. The off offensive player only continues to play offense, but not play defense. The scoring symbol for offensive player only is OP, so the example. At the beginning of the third inning, the designated player Haller is going to play center field. Erwin is the new designated player, offensive player only. In the right position column in the front of Erwin's name, the symbol OP is written. Another thing that was really specific for softball is re-entry. So, what is re-entry? The definition, according to the rulebook, is when a starting player returns to the game after being substituted, all starting players, including the designated player and the flex player, may be substituted and re-enters the lineup once and must remain in the same betting position whenever they are in the lineup. There is no designated player or flex player in slow pitch, but there is an extra player, which is slightly different. All starting players, including the EP, may be substituted and re-enters the lineup once, must remain in the same betting position when they are in the lineup. The starting player and the substitute cannot be simultaneously present in the betting order. The violation of the re-entry rule is treated as an appeal play, which can be done at any time while the illegal substitute is in the game. It is not necessary that the appeal is made before the next pitch. However, all plays that took place while the illegal substitute was in the game are valid. The symbol used to indicate the re-entry of the player will be the vertical bar with two oblique lines pointing to the left. If the re-entry occurs with the runner on base, we have to thicken the border of the square of that base with the oblique lines. Let me explain the re-entry in some examples on the score sheet. So let me give you some examples, starting with the first one. Re-entry for the same starting defensive position. At the beginning of the third inning, Martinez replaces Johnson. Vertical line at the beginning of the inning indicating the new batter. The beginning of the fourth inning, Claire replaces Martinez, vertical line at the beginning of the inning to indicate the new batter. At the beginning of the sixth inning, Johnson re-enters to a position in the batting order and takes the position of second base. Vertical line with two oblique lines pointing to the left to indicate the re-entry. Obviously, being in the same defensive position, the re-enter batter takes again number five, therefore the name should not be rewritten. Example number two, re-entry to a different defensive position. At the beginning of the third inning, White replaces Martin. 
those vertical lines before the inning to indicate the new batter. At the beginning of the fourth inning, Harris replaces white vertical line before the inning to indicate the new batter in the position of shortstop. At the beginning of the sixth inning, Martin re-enters to a position in the batting order and takes the position of second base as shown below. Vertical line with two oblique lines pointing to the left to indicate the re-entry. Baker is the flex player who is replaced on the offense by the designated player. As she is not the pitcher but the flex, her name is written in the first line after the ninth player in the betting order. Since all three lines in the first position of the betting order are now filled, the re-entry of Martin, not returning in her initial defensive position, has to be written on the Baker. In the square of the betting order column note, that she is in position 1 of the betting order. Obviously, while the defensive performance will be written in the corresponding line of that position, our offensive performance has to be written at the initial position on the top of the score sheet. Let's move to the next player type in softball. Within softball, a player is not allowed to play in the game if there is blood visible. If this occurs, this player is called a withdrawn player. What is the definition of a withdrawn player? A player who must leave the game due to an injury that is bleeding and cannot be stopped in a reasonable time or when the player uniforms becomes covered with blood. The withdrawn player is replaced by the replacement player. The withdrawn player must not return to the game until all bleeding ceases the injury is cleaned and covered, and if necessary, uniform is replaced, whether or not the uniform shirt has a different number. There is no penalty for using a different number. However, the umpire must be informed of the changes in numbers. A replacement player may be a listed substitute who has not yet been in the game, or a listed substitute who has been in the game, but subsequently substituted from the game or a starting player who is no longer in the lineup and who is no longer eligible to re-enter re the game. A replacement player may enter the game for a redrawn player, provided that they are of the same gender. This rule is not applicable for fast pitch. A replacement player may play for the withdrawn player for the remainder of the inning in progress and for the following complete inning. The withdrawn player may return to the game at any time during this period without being treated as a substitution. The replacement player is not considered a substitute. If the withdrawn player cannot return after the remainder of the inning, after the completion of the next full inning, a legal substitution must be made. If the withdrawn player is able to return to the game, but after the time allowed by the rule, the team will have to respect the re-entry rule. If a team does not have a legal substitute available, the game will be declared lost due to a forfeit. The example will be published in the new WBC scoring manual, so the current symbol differs as shown in the example. The symbol used to indicate the re-entry of the withdrawn player will be a vertical bar with two oblique lines pointing to the right, as shown in the following example. In the example, Martinez replaces Johnson in the third inning. In the fourth inning, due to a game incident that causes bleeding, Martinez is replaced by Claire. We see the replacement player behind Claire and then Martinez returns in the fifth inning. The replacement on the score sheet is noted with a vertical bar with two oblique lines. Any statistics accrued by the replacement player while they are in the game are credited to that player, even if they are a listed substitute who does not eventually enter the games as a substitution for another player. And now for the last topic of this webinar, 
the temporary runner. Why was the temporary runner created? The purpose of this rule was to speed up the game. If the batter is the catcher and she is the third out, before going into defense, the catcher need to get their gear on. That was time consuming. So they invented the temporary runner to speed up the game. What is a temporary runner? The rule defines that the temporary runner as a player who may run for the catcher of record. Furthermore, a temporary runner is legal for a catcher of record from the previous half inning who is on base with two outs. The following provisions apply. A. The use of a temporary runner is optional for the offensive team manager. B. The temporary runner may be used any time after the second out occurs. As C, the temporary runner is the player scheduled to bat last who is not on base at the time the option is taken. The use of the temporary runner is shown on the score sheet with the abbreviation TR in the right column of the POS column. Also, the abbreviation TR will be written in the corner of the base where the temporary runner enters. Any statistics accrued by the temporary runner will accrue to the player from whom they are running. In the example, the catcher arrives on base with a base on balls. After the second out, the offensive team just chose to use the temporary runner. Johnson goes to the base to run for Baker. In the POS column on the right, the TR is indicated next to the name of Johnson. In the right upper corner of the first base, also TR is mentioned in a small square. This will brings me to the end of this webinar. Just like the first webinar, I would like to end with a quote. There is only one thing to do when it's not baseball and softball season, and that's prepare for the baseball and softball season. I would like to thank you for your participation in this second webinar. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, please feel free to share with me in the Q&A sessions. I wish you all the best. Stay safe and healthy, and I hope to see you back on the field again soon. Thank you, and goodbye.